So right now we're gonna talk about backing up your projects in images. So right now we have our finished product. Um, I'm gonna actually get rid of this layer here. Um, so this is going to be, in a sense, say our logo for a project. And we have our image, um, text. Now how do we go about saving this so we can work on it later on? Uh, for now, I'm just gonna use the desktop, um, but we'll get into um, a little bit um, maybe of even, an even intermediate um, example for you. So what you want to do is um, make sure that um, your layers are selected that you want to save as well. But what we're going to do is go to File, um, and we're going to go to, well, you could export the image, but we'll do that right after. Um, we'll do Save As, okay? And you want to make sure you're constantly saving this as well. I believe there is a, um, because it's cloud-based, there is like a, a, a recovered option, but do your due diligence to um, save your projects yourself. And for this, we're going to call this, um, uh, let's see, logo Chanel. So that's going to be Chanel's project. And we're going to hit Photoshop. So make sure it's, it's already going to be that when you save, but you want to make sure it's on Photoshop. And then you want to save the layers and embedded profile. So once you do that, make sure you select a location. For us, it's just going to be right on the desktop, and I'll show you. And then you can hit save. And in the bottom left here, it, uh, it saved very quickly. But um, in the bottom left there, it will show you. So what you can do, just to show you this works, we'll hit close. And then we're actually going to close the program for you as well. And we're going to go here on their desktop. And then we're going to find our project. So um, there's another one I saved up here as well. But if you go on the desktop, so if you go on the desktop right here, it says logo Chanel PSD. We're going to just make that um, blue to identify it easy, easily. And we're going to right click open with Photoshop. So there you go, our project open right away. So now we can work on it again. If we were to make adjustments, um, that's one good way of backing it up. Now, um, there's another way you could do it as well. It, what I personally like to do is, um, if I'm gonna change this or work on another project like this, if I go to my desktop, so let's go to, um, the desktop here. Um, we have all of our different images we've been using and so on. What we're going to do is go to um, the logo image. We're going to right click and we're going to duplicate that image. So what we can do from there is double tap the image slowly or you could right click to rename it and we're going to call this one We'll make it better. Logo Chanel. Let's do logo underscore. Chanel underscore main project. Now that we've done that, this is a project um, that we do not want to touch or mess around with too much. And then the one on the right that we duplicated that's one that we could screw around with, make some changes, um, and we always have our original file. So again, um, you could just hit rename, right click, rename, main project, and you could call it, um, you know, your original. So you always have your original, and then this is one that you can play with. And then also what I would do, what I would recommend doing, is taking this file. So right now it's on our desktop, which isn't a terrible spot. It's fast to work with, it's accessible, and it's on your main hard drive. But what you can do is take this file, copy it or drag it to an external drive. So for me, I have a 2018 D drive. That's a hard disk drive. And on that, I could create a folder and I could call it Chanel's project with the date on it. And I could do underscore, say, January 10th. Once I do that, I could color it with a, I could identify it with the color, throw it in there. And now I always have that project 
on a spinning disk. So um, right now it's the project's on the desktop um, located right here. So this is on an SSD, which is uh, simply put a solid state drive. It's binary, um, it's using ones and zeros. So um, if, if something gets corrupt, it's hard to recover. However, on a spinning disk drive, the old school method, um, it's very easy to, um, uh, well, you have the potential of recovering your media if something goes bad. So that's how you save your project. That's how you um, make sure that um, uh, you can recover it. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is talk about exporting your image. So there's three different file um, file types that I wanna show you um, that I use all the time. The first one, which is what we did, was PSD, which is Photoshop file. So if you go to um, Save As, you, you can see different um, options, but you want Photoshop because it's gonna retain all your layers. The other way to do it is to, um, if you just want an image of this, you could save it as a PNG or JPEG. So let's go to export, file, export. Um, yeah, you could do a quick um, PNG up here. I like to go export as, gives me more control over what I'm doing. And here you could see the pixels that you're exporting at and whatnot. And then what you, what you wanna do is go to either PNG or JPEG. So PNG is good for transparent images. So um, essentially, if you didn't want the backdrop, that's what you would do. So I'll show you that next. Now we're just gonna do a JPEG. It's gonna give you um, the image. And then again, if you wanna retain the quality, you have the width and the size here. Um, I don't know if there's an option for, um, here we go. So we have 100% quality. So now um, you could, if you wanted to have a, a file size that's smaller, so see how this is 338.8 um, KB. You can make that even smaller, so you can go to a 48, 50% quality, and it will compress it. So essentially when you're compressing an image, you are, um, in a sense, retaining enough quality. However, you're shrinking the file size. So when you hear about old movies going on Blu-rays, that's because when they were originally shot, um, they were shot in 4K, actually. That's what 35 millimeter film was like. Um, that's why everybody's pushing 4K. The resolution was better, but in order to fit it on a VHS or a DVD, they had to compress the image. They had to sacrifice quality for file size. And um, that's always gonna play a role with what you're doing. So if you wanna get the best quality of your image, go to 100%. However, you're going to have much larger file sizes. Um, 692 um, KB is not very big. If you start getting into over a few gigabytes, then you know you have pretty big pictures. So again, that's what you wanna do. Um, and then uh, location, um, basically you wanna hit um, export and then it's gonna give you an option for where you want to put this image. Again, let's just put it on our desktop for now. Logo, Chanel main project, let's call this um, logo, main project, um, original. Oh, it's gonna save it as a JPEG, so let's just save it as that. You could just change this to Chanel's logo, um, but then again, hit save, and Photoshop's gonna do the rest of the work. Looks like it already worked. Now when we go to our desktop, we will have our photo. So um, let's find the JPEG, so .jpeg, this is going to be it. And then here we could make it a yellow or a different color. We could also bring this to our external hard drive, um, spinning disk, we could throw it on there. And then from there we could find our folder called, um, let's see, Chanel's project, January 10th. So now on a separate hard drive that you could store at a different location than your main computer, you have your original file that's recovered so if you ever need to recover it, you have your original file where you can manipulate the image and you have your final image right here as a JPEG. Now, if you want just the logo without the backdrop, let's talk about that. And that's going to be a PNG file. So 
What's really important about this is selecting your layer. So layer six, we're not gonna need. Um, and if we just want the text and all, let's get rid of the background. So let's get rid of those. Now we are left with just the image and then let's get rid of the flare. So now when we export, um, in JPEG, it would create a um, backdrop image. So it would create, it would add a color, whether it be gray, I believe, or white. So for us, it's gonna be the text and it's going to be the layer four and it's going to be the small pencil. Let's hit file. And you could do quick export PNG, but I always like to do export as. File, export as. Quick PNG should work as well, but I know this method works. Now, if we toggle to PNG, notice how we'll have a transparent background here. That's because it is only, only going to export this. So now when you add it to an image, you're not gonna have that backdrop color. So you could throw it on a poster or something like that. And again, hit your um, expert, make sure that you convert, um, see this um, um, color space, the sRGB works perfectly fine. Um, again, for beginner level type course, this works fine. So export, and we're gonna call this, um, again, it's the exact same thing except .png. It's on our desktop. Let Photoshop do its thing. Then when we go to our desktop, we find our um, PNG file. So right here. And as you can see, this one looks a little bit different than the rest. We'll make it purple. That's because um, it's transparent in the background. So we only have our main logo, our text, our, our artwork. That's all we have. So let's take this. Let's show you a different way. Let's um, copy this. So copy logo, let's go to our folder, Chanel's project, and let's paste it with um, Command Z. And now, no matter what, if you have to go back, if you delete something, you have something on a separate hard drive. I have tons of projects here. Um, hope I should probably blur out some of them um, because a lot of these are weddings or private um, corporate um, projects that I'm working on, or maybe some new courses coming along. And uh, yeah, absolutely, that's, that's how you do this. So um, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Now you know how to save your project and how to export in those three different formats.